Für die Kommission erhält nun das Wort Herr Vizepräsident Zekic. Thank you very much, uh, Madam President, honorable members of the European Parliament, my dear colleagues uh, from the European Commission. At first, uh, I really would like uh, to thank you for what I felt was very strong, overwhelming support in most of the intervention for the ambitious proposal the Commission has uh, tabled today. And I really would like to thank you for the inspirations we at many occasions uh, we drew from this House, from your resolutions, from your debates uh, we had uh, with you, when we've been uh, looking for the ways how to best respond to your calls for demonstrating bigger solidarity, for using this crisis as an opportunity to modernize European economy, and for consolidate the position of EU Europe as a global actor and global player. We proposed uh, the proposals which was never done before. It really sounds precedent because uh, what we wanted to do was to adapt the initial multi-annual financial perspective uh, proposal to the current needs and because we fully realize that the economic crisis is so sharp and so deep, we knew that we need to come up with a new instrument which we named uh, Next Generation EU. Altogether, we are talking about 1.1 trillion of the proposal for MFF and additional 750 billion of uh, euros for the next generation instrument, which would be divided uh, between grants and loans, as you suggested in your resolution. I very much appreciate uh, that Mr. Weber, Madam Garcia Perez, Mr. Cholos supported uh, this uh, approach. And I would like to reassure you that we know that uh, the success of uh, these proposals would be judged by the results. If we invest the money in the right uh, areas, and we definitely want to do that. We fully realize uh, that if we want to modernize the European economy, we have to invest in green, sustainable technologies. We have to be much more digital than we are right now, and we have to learn our lessons for improving the resilience of the European economy because we learned how difficult it is to be dependent on some global value chains or single supplier of such a sensitive health materials uh, uh, as uh, we have seen over the last uh, few months. So what we put on the table is uh, the proposal how to not only overcome the crisis, but how to modernize it, how to respect the important social aspects uh, of uh, our policy, and how to make Europe really ready for the post-COVID 21st century world. A lot of questions, uh, and uh, some of them presented with a great uh, vigor, being uh, uh, linked uh, to the debt and also to the own resources. Mr. Moiten, Madame Aubry, Mr. Uh, van Overveld. Here again, I would like to tell you that we did our homework. We studied the issue very carefully, and we are coming with the different options uh, for the own resources, which we want to, of course, explore with you and with the member states. We want to use uh, the new ETS uh, revenues, which will be coming eventually from the aviation and maritime sector, to use them for financing parts of the uh, MFF uh, in the future. We are considering so-called single market uh, uh, tax, uh, especially from those companies which are benefiting from the fact that the single market is so big and functions that well. We will be following carefully how other uh, countries and powers on this planet are respecting the Paris goals and if they are really re reducing the carbon footprint of their products and of their economy. And we would be ready to proceed, if necessary, with a carbon adjustment tax, which again could be the re revenue of the European budget. And we are, of course, not uh, forgetting about uh, the possibility of the digital taxations, where, of course, uh, the, we want to have a global agreement, preferably within OECD or G20. But if, this would, not, if uh, this would not work, we are ready to consider to go alone. And uh, Madam Shidlo and Mr. Asman have been uh, highlighting the importance of the tax evasion and unfair tax practices. This is, of course, one of the priorities upon which we are going to focus. And for us, the proper 
executions of the European budget and proper tax collection is, of course, uh, one of the key uh, priorities. To be quite honest, I didn't quite get the, the comment of the Honourable Member John Joshi, who was criticising us for lack of transparency. At 12 o'clock, we in the College adopted uh, these very important proposals, and 1 o'clock, the whole College was here. The European Parliament was the first audience where we presented uh, our proposals, where our President uh, went into a great detail what we want to do, how we want to uh, accomplish it. And therefore, I think that uh, that tradition where we fully respect the democratic scrutiny of the European Parliament would be, of course, maintained in the, uh, in the future. And we will be debating with you all of the legislative uh, proposals, which are very complex and where we need the close uh, cooperation and very close uh, uh, consultation. There, were, there have been several questions linked with the state aid. I have to say that uh, my colleague, uh, Executive Vice President, Madame Vestager, is known for her vigor in reviewing and assessing every single state aid uh, application. And uh, we also have to agree that these last three months have been totally exceptional. At first we had to fight for the lives of our citizens, then for the li livelihoods and for the jobs. And this is what we've been, with your help, doing uh, since the beginning of uh, this year. If you allow me, Madam uh, President, uh, to conclude with a plea, with a request, because I think that uh, we are at a truly historic European moment where we need all of us to show clear political leadership. We would very much appreciate the strong support uh, of uh, the European Parliament, as Mr. González Pons has highlighted. But we also need your help to convince your compatriots back home. Uh, therefore, I'm also uh, addressing this request, uh, request uh, towards uh, the Council uh, towards the Member States because we need the good decision, we need the quick decision and of course uh, we need to work very closely uh, with all national parliaments as well because in the end when we are talking about uh, the headrooms, ceilings and own resources we need also uh, uh, positive ratif ratification of the national parliament. Therefore what we need is uh, true political leadership which would uh, help Europe to overcome the crisis and really to prepare it uh, for the next phase. So my last sentence uh, would uh, be directed to all of us. So let's, let's do this effort uh, for the European Union. Let's do it uh, uh, for the next uh, generation and uh, let's uh, do it uh, for demonstrating our citizens that we know how to overcome the crisis and how can we prepare the Europe for the 21st century. Thank you very much, Madam President. Thank you, Vice President. And to the end of the debate, I the floor for the Rat, for Minister Brignac. Thank you, Madam President. Honourable Members, first I would like to thank you for this debate. And I will convey your views to my colleagues and to the President of the European Council and his team. As I said in my opening intervention, the Council has started preparatory work on the Commission proposal uh, so to create the conditions for the agreement as soon as possible. Uh, as I already mentioned yesterday, at the video conference uh, of the EU Affairs Ministers have discussed the principles and the elements that needed to be addressed in the shaping uh, the instruments that will help the kickstart the European economy and achieve its medium and long-term priorities such as cohesion, convergence, solidarity, flexibility and inclusiveness, as well as restoring a functioning single market and strengthening the resilience and strategic autonomy of the EU in face of the future challenges. They stress the need to make the funds available immediately and in a sufficient amount. Offsetting the immediate negative impact of the crisis is, Im is important for the EU credibility. These discussions will continue in the coming days and weeks at all Council levels. We are hopeful that the Member States' positions would be, would be converging in order to have a timely agreement on the next EU budget, which will also be discussed by the European Council. The Council will need guidance from the European Council before it can form its position. The European Parliament shares our sense of urgency on the MFF, 
whose speedy adoption has far-reaching consequences for our citizens, our businesses and our local and regional authorities, as mentioned here. The Presidency will continue to listen carefully to the Parliament's position and look forward to the continued cooperation between our two institutions to prepare the ground for ambitious, forward-looking MFF and to provide a strong response to our current and the future challenges. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Minister. Damit ist die Aussprache geschlossen. Das Protokoll dieser Sitzung wird dem Parlament zu Beginn der nächsten Sitzung zur Genehmigung vorgelegt. Die Sitzungsperiode des Europäischen Parlaments ist unterbrochen und die Sitzung ist geschlossen. Vielen Dank.